Next, I'm going to move on to the topic of synchronization in shared memory programs. So we had seen an example earlier where uh, we had written the ocean kernel in, in with, with shared memory, and we had seen that you know you ultimately get to some critical sections where you have to read and modify and update uh, some shared variable. And we said that if you want to do a read modify write, you have to make sure that you first acquire a lock, confirm that you are the only one making the change, then you do the change, and then you release the lock. And this this ensures. Uh, that you have mutual exclusion, that, that at a time there's only one thread uh, that, that is busy performing the critical section at, at a time. Okay, so uh, you know to implement these critical sections, to, Im to implement these basic synchronization primitives such as locks and barriers, you need a little bit of hardware support. Okay, and, you know, and having that hardware support uh, makes these processes you know much more efficient. Okay, so uh, I'm going to describe some of these basic primitives and I'll show you how that is used to construct uh, a lock routine or a barrier routine. Okay, so you know here's uh, here's the most basic primitive uh, that helps us construct these um, these these larger software primitives like locks and barriers. And you know this primitive is called for example an atomic exchange. Okay, and what it does is if you have, you know, some registers and let's say register R1 is is the one in question right now and you know here's my memory let's ignore caches for a minute let's just assume that you have uh, your main memory as a back backup to your to your register file and there's a location over here which is my lock variable okay what an, what an atomic exchange does is in a single operation it swaps the contents of the this, this register r1 and this lock variable in memory okay and when i mean atomic what it what it what it refers to is that you know, all of these operations are performed as effectively one operation with no interfering read or write to either the register or the memory location. Okay, so, you know, this this is this is a difficult guarantee to provide. So sometimes uh, you do allow other things to happen at the same time, but the net effect is as if this entire operation, you know, happened in isolation and nothing else was happening at the same time. Okay, so in, in essence, an atomic operation is one where, you know, all of this is performed together with no interfering read or write to those same locations. Okay, so an atomic exchange, as I said, swaps the contents of a register entry and a memory location. Okay, and I'm going to show you how that can be used to construct a lock. And I'm going to take a special case of an atomic exchange operation called a test and set. Okay, this is a special case where the value in the register happens to be a 1 at the start. Okay, so what you're doing is putting a 1 into that memory location and then reading what is in the memory location into the register and then you're going to check the value of that register or test the value of that register okay so th that's why it's called a test and set and you know how it is used in the lock will be made clear as as I walk through this example okay so what is going on here is you know here uh, as I said I have my register file here's a given register you know let's call it R1 and it initially has a 1 in it okay and in memory I have my my lock variable and if that lock variable carries a 1 it means that somebody else has the lock okay and somebody is busy you know working inside a critical section if that lock variable has a 0 in it then it means that no one currently holds the lock and no one is executing the critical section so somebody else can go ahead and acquire the lock okay so let's assume that at at, at the start the lock is unacquired so it is unoccupied and someone is free to enter uh, this critical section so when when a thread calls the lock routine, this is what happens. The first thing it does is it implements a test and set involving this register and this memory location. Okay, so what it does is it swaps these two. Okay, so at the end the register has zero and the lock variable has a one. So what you're essentially doing is you know by attempting to acquire the lock, you're putting a one into that lock variable, saying that I'm now going to hold the lock. Okay, and you know this prevents other people from acquiring the lock. And what you get back over here tells me if, you know, before my attempt, was the lock occupied or not. In this case, it says that before my attempt, the lock was unoccupied, so, you know, my attempt has clearly been successful. Okay, so the next thing I do is I check the value of this register. And if it is a zero, then great, I can carry on. So if it's a zero, that means no one is holding the lock. I just wrote a one to occupy the lock myself. Now I can carry on and execute my critical section over here. Okay, and then when I'm done, it's very easy to release the lock. All I have to do is store a zero into that location. So, you know, right now the lock has a one. When I do a store, this one becomes a zero. 
and now others who are trying to do a test and set can succeed. Okay, so let's so you know while uh, this thread was in the critical section, let's look at another thread that was trying to acquire the lock. Okay, let's see what what view it had. So that thread you know also put a one into its register. Since the lock is occupied, it actually you know this value stores a one. And then when you do an atomic exchange, the register now contains the value one, and the memory location is also going to contain one because you just did a one did a write of one into it. Okay, so the effect of some other thread trying to acquire the lock, as far as the lock is concerned, it has no effect because the lock was occupied before; it continues to be occupied. Okay, and this value in the register tells this attempting thread that its attempt has actually failed because even before I tried to acquire the lock the lock was already occupied. So this thread after doing the test and set it examines the value of this register it sees a 1 which means you know not equal to 0 so branch back up over here and so this thread will keep on executing the test and set in a loop and it will keep noticing that the lock is occupied ultimately when somebody else releases the lock this test and set will finally succeed and then that thread can now enter the critical section. Okay, so when there are multiple threads all you know trying to execute a lock, are uh, all trying to execute this lock function, you know, the, they will all be making these unsuccessful attempts. Finally, when the lock is released, you know, whoever is the first to read that memory location is going to succeed in acquiring the lock, and everybody else is going to fail and they're going to carry on. Right? So one of the key things in making this work is to ensure that this atomic exchange, you know, is indeed atomic that you know while you are exchanging the values you don't want others to also read the value of the memory location otherwise you know multiple people will think that the lock is unoccupied and they've all succeeded and they will all move ahead with their critical section okay so you have to make sure that when one thread is doing this atomic exchange no one else is trying to read or write either the register or that memory location okay so this is a basic support that the hardware must provide uh, to make a test and set work correctly and then accordingly build uh, a lock in software or to build a barrier in software.